So, welcome to week five, day two of the National Hunt side of the Starters Order 6 Online League. We've got another action packed day's racing for you today, coming from three venues. Just a one race coming from Ascot, a handicap, and Stu will be there to take you through that. And then I've got six absolutely cracking races in Newbury. And then after that one, we will be off to Punchestown, where Stu will be leaping out of the um, SO6 helicopter and landing in a Punchestown commentary box after his little one race stint at Ascot. So, let's take a look at the races in a little more detail then as we said the handicap uh, ask it or kick things off that's a pretty pretty good looking race to be honest big field and could go to absolutely anybody there's a couple in there that have got some good runs and pipe and lied for james follis he's taking a step up in class after winning a few low grade races earlier in the season they'll be trying to up the ante from a mark of 101 then of course we'll be off to newbury for the highlight of the day the six race card coming from newbury kicks off with the newbury mayor's hurdle they got a small but select field in that one with prime suspect for Paul Rhodes, the one that boasts the best form and is also the highest rated. After that, it'll be the time for the novices to take centre stage for a couple of races. They'll have the Worcester novices chase first. That's a grade two event over three miles. And again, it's a small field, but it's a pretty good looking field with all the top names in there. Joshua Sutherland will be hoping that Battle of the Hot Gates has a little bit more luck today because they've been unseated and pulled up either side of its win. And triple player, the only other winner in the field is also also fallen as well so that's a wide open race that one anything could take that that'll be followed by the slightly shorter two and a half mile novices chase that's the Berkshire novices chase that one we seem to have a few more hot pots in that one it's still a reasonably small field but we've got fantastic chestnut surprise winter port st david's day gemini suite all winners so far this season plus you throw into the mix there nevertheless for carl Aragante, who's been placed twice hollywood broke the gate has also been placed twice you've got a pretty good looking race there with quite a few people will be fancying their chances to take that prize home with them at the end of the day. Then we'll be looking at the uh, smaller obstacles for a couple of races. The Jerry Field and Handicap Hurdle is one of the most prestigious non-group handicaps of the season. Again, we've got some pretty good looking horses in that slightly bigger field for this one. Ancient Hill for Jim Murray is the top rated and is sure to go well. But Rough Silk for Kevin Meenahan was a winner last time out and is quite lowly weighted. And also Twix for Alex Cherry is a previous winner that has run from out of the handicap. Then we go to the Group 2 Long Distance Hurdle. I should give us some pointed for the world hurdle at Cheltenham later in the season and we've got plenty of winners in this one as well with eights and mystery Joshua Sutherland at the top of the pecking order with a whopping great 173 rating giving him a 13 pound pull technically speaking he should be 13 pound better than all of these and Major Barris is his closest opponent but well, that one pulled up last time out Destan has only run twice won one of them Summer Harbour was a winner last time out as well and flavour it for Serious Chill is making its first appearance so it's a baptism of fire for that one so that of course then takes us on to the big one, the Hennessy Gold Cup Handicap Chase. There's always been some good horses in this race. Arkle, of course, won it many years ago, and that resulted in the handicaps all being changed because Arkle was the only horse that was in the handicap because he was so much better than all the others. That is a problem that we do have sometimes here with this SO6 league, that when the horses get too good, it does mean the others are all out of the handicap. We've got a bit of a similar situation with this today. We've only got about four or five in the handicap proper, and the rest of them all running off the same weight. Still will be a spectacular race, though, and we do want those big horses in these races so I really don't know what the answer to that little problem is so Fort Lauderdale for Paul Rhodes in the last year's Gold Cup winner will top the weights at 172 Battle for Sparta a faller last time out is second and in the weights and it Marbo is third and that one fell last time out as well and the fourth highest rated horse in the race Barrakilla pulled up last time so there's got to be a possibility that all, all four of those might not even finish which would leave us with a, a very interesting race indeed Star Fens won the last two times out that'll be looking for a hat-trick for Kevin Meenahan and he normally does quite well in these long distance chases so that'll be worth looking at and also Royal Molly for John Morgan he's unbeaten in one run and you never know with John's he doesn't run them unless he thinks they're going to win so he must think that one's got a bit of a chance and of course it will be running off featherweight as well Ashton has run a couple of times this season well he also was back from previous seasons as well and eyes to the right for Glenn Clutterbuck's already had a win as well this season but I've got a feeling it was in a pretty low grade sort of race Jim Murray's got one right down the bottom called Chisholm Ray you don't see a Jim Murray right down the bottom there too often after that we will go to Punchestown where hopefully there'll be no air traffic control problems and Stu will arrive 
parachuted down into the commentator's box for the Group 1 Morgiana hurdle. Again, a smallish type field, but a good field again with some good winners in there from previous weeks. Bold Ruler, Sir Usain Bolt, Silver Lock, The Big Show, all winners already this season and all good enough to win this. Throw into the mix again there that Moliet Surfer's got Orange Eyes, who looks like a pretty decent sort of horse as well. And also Boomerang for Graham Clutterbuck is in there. And Limestone Lad for John Morgan. He's a maiden, but John Morgan doesn't run his horses unless he thinks they're going to win. So that one must be in with a chance as well. The second race, the second big race at Punchestown is the Punchestown Chase. That's another Group 1. And it's a two and a half mile race this time. And again, a smallish field with just about eight of them. And one or two that look like they're just in there for the fun of it. To be brutally honest, my fellow commentators, Stu and Doug, have both got runners who look to be well out of their depth. And Derek Hinton's The Bear also looks like it'll probably struggle. But of the others, I have to say, Sympathy for the Devil looks to have some pretty good form. And Daz Myoon has won the last two times out. So they look to be the big two. Throw in their Toad Hall for Graham Clutterbuck. Falling through clouds for Joshua Sutherland and Primal Scream for Kevin Meenahan. And we should get a pretty interesting looking race for that. After that one, we will have some Moore's Million Stairs. We've got leg six of the Moore's Million Stairs. This one's only over three miles, three miles and two furlongs. I don't know why it's so short. Looks wide open as usual, these Moore's Millions. Nothing in there with particularly spectacular looking form. Although Tommy Gunn for Kevin Meenahan, who we seem to be mentioning quite a lot today, does seem to be running into some sort of form and that one would probably get my vote if I had to vote for one. After that we've got the long distance version of the Moors Millions. This is the four mile one furlong version and again a big field for this as everybody gets their Grand National horses tuned up ready for that big race later in the season. Street Fire for Doug Warren has got four P's next to his name so let's hope that one can finish the race at least today and Grainer Moore for Darren Howes has got three P's in a nose so that one's going to be hoping to get a number instead as well. Plenty in there with lots of good chances in that race. So it looks wide open and doesn't look to be any sort of standout horse in that race at all and in fact quickly scouring down the card I'm not even sure I can see any horse that's actually won a race yet so you'd obviously be drawn towards Thunder Sparks Flexen or Paul Rhodes' Macarena but as we've seen this season the big trainers are not having it all their own way in some of these races so that one could be a really exciting race and we might get a bit of a surprise in that then the day will end with a handicap which we'll see out day two and then we'll be all be back for day three and more exciting races tomorrow so first of all let's get over to Stuart Ascot and he's going to do this quick handicap for you before he jumps in that helicopter.